All right, so here we have a three-year-old quarter horse that uh, needs needs some uh, guidance training. So what we're working on right now is a couple of different things. One one is actually getting her to uh, understand what neck reining is all about, and the other is for her to round her back. So what I try to do here is when I'm using my indirect rein, I use my outside rein with it. So I move my hands equally in the box. So when I move over, she should go over with me. I'm also going to use my outside leg. So it's inside aids to outside. And in here, I'm lifting her up with me in the rib cage, which will lift her back. And they naturally will put their head down when their back is lifted, which is a good thing because then I can work, put some muscle on the top line. So I try to take advantage of the horse uh, in their natural abilities of what they will do because we all watch them graze so the nose is down in the grass and they're walking along munching so they can do the same thing under saddle here again outside rain I'm not pulling on the inside rain I have my hand my free hand here holding it but I'm just sliding that rein around on her. So there we go. So then there she came, she came into the bridle a little bit more, rounding herself up and coming off the neck rein at the same time. So this is a blended, you know, movement, education, whatever you want to say. Okay. When you ride, this is my, this is my, uh, this is my sixth ride on this horse. So in five rides, I've taken a horse that, that uh, yes, you could plow rein it. In other words, direct rein the horse in movement. So in other words, just put the nose where you want her to go. So that was, you know, that was fair enough. But she already had a few rides on her with that style of riding. So what I'm looking for now is to make a neck rein, neck reiner out of her. So when I put that rein on, she's to go. And here she's already starting to figure out what I'm after. Now it's, she's a little flat in the turn, so all I'm going to do is just show her what I want. Now when I bring the nose in, before she was falling in on the right side, so I have to use, and this, on this right rein she would go in, the shoulders would go into the inside. So here I'm using my inside leg to hold the shoulder and the rib cage up and get her to bend around my leg. And when you do this type of exit, here, see, there you go, there she's falling in. So here I'm gonna push her back out and pull her a little bit more to get her to bend. Come on. There we go, good. Sometimes their legs get sticky, which is okay. And I'm not gonna, you know, get after her. I'm just gonna keep asking, asking, asking until I get those legs moving again. So here we'll try it to the left, so inside leg, again to stop that shoulder from dropping, outside rein. This came down very nice, she's softer on this left side than she is on the right. Now here, this is okay, but I want a little bit more because I want her to get a little more rounded, so here I'm going to pick, up, pick her up, meaning I'm putting my, my rowels on the, underneath her rib cage, lifting her back, and she will drop the neck okay and I have shown her I have shown her what I'm after so when I use the reins okay and I always say the reins are an assistant to what your saddle work should be so I have shown her a little bit more of what I'm after so when I apply my leg while turning her here okay that she will round up for me. 
And as she starts to push to the inside, all I'm going to do is just grab her a little bit more and then I'm going to put a little more inside leg on her and just push her out. And I'm going to hold her like this because this helps pick up the shoulder all the way through. Come on. Good girl. Good girl. She's not used to me talking a lot here, so. Anyway, so you want to, when you, when you use your leg and you bring them around, you're going to pull a little bit because you want it. They're falling into the inside of the circle. So we say, hey, stand back up and move out a little bit to emphasize not to drop that shoulder. So here I'll do the same thing, but do a little bit of lateral work to get her to pick that shoulder up. Good girl, good girl, good girl, good. I just looking for, in the beginning, if I get half a step, um, which was, you know, say two rides ago, um, that was plenty for me, and then I would go to the other side. Now she's, she's pretty smart, and uh, maybe after five tries of showing her, she starts to pick up on things. Not, not that normal 20 times. But anyway, every horse is different. So in between doing stuff, I let them relax. So the, I have some pressure on them when I ask them to do something and then I will let them go on their own here and then I will pick them up again and then ask again, usually to the other side. So here, now here she's, I will slide that reins on her and use the bottom of my um, spurs. Right? All I'm doing is just, I'm not kicking her. I'm just putting that rowel, those rowels on, and then just kind of massaging the rowel, you know, just by kind of rolling it a little bit. And then she's used to being checked a little bit here. Sometimes I got to go two-handed, and then I go one-handed. In the beginning, there was no one hand at all, okay? But with going backwards and forwards, two-handed to one-handed, um, it, it gives you a chance to always evaluate the animal's learn, learning curve and also what, what can you do different to make them understand. Um, if, you, if, you've, uh, if you're, you know, you're stuck a little bit. So here, head eye, so we're going to bring her in. There we go. And she comes back in again. Here, inside leg to outside. And I just slide the rein on them a little bit so they can feel it. And I'm going to just bump with my outside leg a little bit when that rein goes. There we go. And then I'm going to give her a pet. Good girl. Walk, walk. So I don't hurry anything. Things, things happen at a good pace anyway. I'm never really worried about um, you know, educating an animal and how fast it needs to be done because if you take your time and you're consistent in what you ask for, so the communication is always the same, then they, they pick up on it pretty quick. But if you're all over the place and you're getting upset at them because they're not um, responding well, there she fell in, so now I'm going to push her out, say, hey, don't take that step in. So anyway, uh, don't, don't get after them just because things aren't going well. Just wait. Let the stuff come along naturally. Because it's amazing how fast things can get going. And the other thing is if you upset them and they get tight in the head, the whole body gets tight. So now they're all braced up against you and uh, if there's all this jerking and kicking going on, they're already tense because they're waiting they're waiting for that big explosion, so, so they're not soft, and I want them soft. See, all i got to do is just massage the bit a little bit. Look at that. And that's what I want, because this is, this is a long and low stretch. So in the beginning, when you're, especially when you're warming them up, you want them to stay soft and calm and relaxed, and you want them to stretch out, okay? But I try to have all that the whole time I'm riding, even when I'm showing them new exercises. Okay, so now we're going to pick her up into the jog. 
And I can say to her jog, give her a little smooch, a little bit of leg. Good girl. So there was a little bit of a reward for her there. And see, I run him on a loose rein as much as I can. I'm not worried about the horse getting away on me. The rein's still in my hand. I can still pick it up whenever I need it. So why do you, why do you need to ride so tight? Well, especially with what we're doing now. I mean, we're, we're far from having any type of collection. We're not doing dressage at all. And you wanna, you wanna get all of this down before you start doing anything serious with dressage anyway, and they've gotta learn how to get rounded up anyway. Okay, so here we're gonna ask her to soften up again. Ask her to soften up again. She's pushing on that leg. I'm gonna push her out a little bit, say hey. Give her a little reward there for that. The other thing is I don't want her running around. Any horse can run, so that's never, never a, uh, a problem or an issue because I know they're going to go. There she's coming in again. I'm going to push her out. But I just want her to stay calm and relaxed the whole time and, and concentrate basically on staying between my legs which is the same thing with my hands. I'm not moving my hands around a lot. I just hold my hands in place. Good girl. And when she's relaxed, then I can actually do a little bit more with her there. And if you're pulling a lot and you get them behind the bridle, that's not good either. You want them sitting on the bit. So when you train them up, you need to train them up on the bit. You don't want them behind it, and you don't want them in front. I'm always testing them. Now we put the left rein on to see if I can get her to go to the right. There's my neck rein to the right. My right hand is here, hip height, just to see, just in case I need I needed the backup, okay? Because remember, the reins I use as an assistant, like an assistant trainer. Because you want, you want a, good, a good percentage, you know, like a, a, a well-trained bridle horse for me is where I'm riding 90% out of the saddle. Now here she's running away from my leg a little bit. Here, I'm just gonna bring her back. She's a little stiff on this side today. And the stiffness, you know, you have to work with it. So tomorrow it could be the left side for whatever the reason, you know? Okay, so here I'm gonna see what I want her is I want her to round up. Good, now we're just gonna turn her a little bit tight here, make a smaller circle. I'm gonna bring the rein down low. Okay, let's try the other side. So here she's naturally, she's got more flow this side. You can see instantly the way she goes She's smoother, a little more rhythm, floats a little more, and she just wants to sit there. And I'm just giving everything to her. I'm staying out of her way. It's a, one of the old cowboy sayings to stay out of the way of the horse. So yes, we get in the way when we need to help them. And then when they're going, you, you feel that they're going okay, then you just get out of the way and see what they do. Here she needs some help again. Good. Good. Okay, so now we're going to try to the right again. Okay, here I got to see there. There you go, right there. 
And the thing is too, easy, 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 easy. Good girl. Okay, so here I got the door open. Now, this is okay if I'm looking for some directional control. Easy, easy, easy. And here I have to give it a little bit. But what I would, ideally what I would like, easy, hey, come on. Good. What I would like to do is ride with the bridge, with the bridge uh, closer. So in other words, tighten up on the box. That's what I like. Now if I go to the left here, as you can see, look at this. You want to see how she goes to the left? And then I can just correct her a little bit. This is one-handed now, right? One-handed in a snaffle with split reins. So you want to check your workout, you want to see how the horse is doing. Then you go and do this. Now, let's make her go this, to the right side. It's not quite as smooth. I would like it smoother and it will come. Now here I'm going to grab my free hand and I'm just going to set her in a little bit, a little more leg because she has, she's got a little bit of push on that rib cage. So here I'm just going to take her laterally a little bit. If her head comes up, I, I kind of expect it because the, Diagonally, she's short through the muscles, through her back. And a little tight through the chest. So I'm just going to counter bend her. That's all I'm doing. I'm just letting the shoulders lead the turn. Good. But I stay with her. I'm going to stay with her and I need to help her the whole time. But am I getting rough on the horse or anything crazy? No. It, you know, you just got to take it easy on them and let them figure it out. If the horse gets upset, or you make the horse upset, you might as well get off the horse. And there's a point there where the lesson will end easy, 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 easy. Where the lesson will end because there's nothing going on anymore. You've completely lost the educational point to the lesson. So now we're going to do a little bit of lateral counter. I'm going to grab two hands. This gives me a little more stability. If you open the bridle up a little bit like that, it puts more balance in the bridle. A lot of guys say, oh, I don't know what that does. But that's what happens. You get more open bridle is more of a balanced bridle. And it works. Good. And it's good to post the trot on them. And you can never be afraid to pick up on them and, you know, show extra guidance with them, right? Here she's running a little flat, so guess what? I'm going to give her a little extra and say hey to her. I bring my hand down, choke up on the reins. I'm just going to go back here to the sitting and give her a little bit of a rest. Now she's anticipating the turn, so I'm saying, hey, now I'm going to turn her to the right because she was leaning to the left and she wants to pick up the speed. So the other thing is you're looking for consistency in the rhythm of the movement. So no matter what you're doing, even though even though they're learning things and they might trip up here and there, 
this is this is all okay but the trick is is to make everything you know simple and steady so here I'm trying to you know get her to stay up get her to stay rounded uh, get her to use get used to the the pressure for direction I mean there's there's quite a bit of stuff going on here so the whole time I'm doing this, I'm, I'm trying to keep the mind, the mindset of the animal, quiet and calm so she can pay attention to learning. And, you know, the other thing here too is I'm not forcing any, at this stage of the game, on the sixth ride with this horse, um, I'm not forcing anything with her. I'm just also trying to see you know where she's at mentally and how she thinks or responds to my um, communication and how she moves with that every horse is a little bit different there so anyway the the thing is they lower their neck, that's fine. And they will push their nose out a little bit. But in the beginning, I want them to drop and get long and low. I want long and low. So it helps give uh, more suspension in the bridge between the shoulders and the hip. And they come up more when they're like this. It, and it, you know, nothing's ever perfect. Not at this stage of the game. But I'm getting where I need to go for down the road. Now and then, if she's going okay, then I will just tweak her a little bit. But when you pull to tweak that headset, you have to use your legs because you'll hollow out your lift like she did then, and then hollow out a little bit in her back. So you want the headset to stay where it's at, but just tweak the angle of it so she sits on the bit better, then you have to use your legs more. Especially in the Western, I mean, you can obviously in English, the leg, legs are used quite a bit as well. Okay, I also have the um, availability to me by also having a, a crop with a bat on the end or something, so I can also tap them to bring them up. But really, if you know what you're doing with your body, you don't need all those artificial not on every horse anyway some horses some horses require extra extra everything and I'm pretty sure somewhere in here with this animal there'll be extras extra stuff this bit that's in this horse's mouth is a three inch loose ring snaffle three eighths smooth bar snaffle it's the mildest uh, western snaffle bit that you can uh, put in a horse's mouth so and she's not really abusing it you know taking advantage of it in, in any way um, I if that if that was the case and she was brooding and pushing on my hand and doing all sorts of other funny stuff then I would go to what I call mild my mild twisted there she fell to the inside and I pushed her back up um, anyway I would go to a mild my mild twisted uh, which is a, my, a copper, three-eighths copper twisted, uh, three-inch loose ring snaffle bit as well. I work with snaffles. And uh, for showing them, uh, yes, they have to be in some... Good girl. They have to be in, you know, in a, in a curb bit. Uh, when you're showing them, unless you're showing them in a hackmore uh, or a snaffle class. So anyway, now you can see, after a bit here, I don't know, we've probably been going here a good 12 minutes or so, and here now I'm riding her around one-handed. She's still stiff, not as stiff on the right, but it's still there, and I, 
I just, you know, keep working with her a little bit by the little bit. The horses, the best way to warm horses up is at the, uh, yeah, jog trot, more so at the trot than at the jog. Notice that's where I want her. I want her long and low, so I'm not going to pull on her face. She's not really down on her shoulders. She's, her frame is still, is still square here. So I can feel her back come up. And that's what I'm looking for. I want this horse's top line to be rock solid. Like, you know, Mr. Olympia, you know, uh, weightlifter guy or bodybuilder guy. It's a performance horse. I believe, I believe that the horse is uh, going to be used uh, for reining in particular. But I mean, whether even if it's a working cow, cutting, all this stuff, it doesn't really matter. There, I just helped her a little bit. Now, when I, when I go two-handed, here you see me one-handed. So here, I'm going to go two-handed, and I just go like this, and then I just, I just, there we go, I just slide the bit through my mouth. I just massage it. The old term is sawing the bit. Uh, it's an old cowboy term from, from the yesteryears, but uh, a more appropriate term I think that people understand these days is massage. So, and the massage, all it is is you're, you're balancing the pressure on and off on either side of the face, and, it, it, and in doing so, it just pulls the 3 8 bar through the animal's mouth a little bit, and I'm, I mean, I'm using my fingers here too, by the way. I'm not, you don't see me grabbing handfuls and jerking. I'm just using my fingers. My fingers are extended. And when I do this, I've got maybe two inches of pull, which is still way too much. You only need maybe an inch maximum. And I can feel that bit in her mouth. So I just want it to hit the, hit the cheeks and just pull on the cheek, on, you know, on the, li on the lips there a little bit. You know, I'm not here to cause any pain at all. I don't want to cause any pain. But I will, I will put enough effect on the bit so that she understands, oh, 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 yes, I've got to, I've got to turn or I've got to lower my head. Here she's pushing. So I'm just going to push her back out here. She's leaning towards the camera. So I'm just going to make a point here. Now notice when I do that, I bend her and, and counter bend her so the inside shoulder lifts because it dropped back there. Now, now she's standing up. Look at this. So here I've come off the back just to poster a bit. This is also very good for the back. If you're always sitting on the back, um, it never really allows You know, blood flow is still always going through, but it's always good to get off the back to, to give the back a rest. You know, when you got 200 pounds sitting up top on these guys. Now, now we're going to see, I'm going to test her here and see if I can make a circle where I started. That's what I want to, oh, I blew through it. She pushed out. Uh, now she's coming in. Okay, so we're going to do it again here. This is where she's stiff. Uh, 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 uh. Doesn't really want to come around. On the big stuff, on the big circle, she's okay, but on the small circle. There we go. There's neutral right there with her. See if I can go around again. Now I got a lot of right rowel on her just to hold that shoulder. There, I just pushed her a little bit because she's leaning. She's a little heavy on my leg. Good, that's good, good. And I'll give her a pet for that. Now she just fell to the left a little bit, so I just picked her up. Now, when she fell, I picked her up with my leg and the rein. I pulled up on that inside rein. The rein, you, you want rein use there. You know, that 10, 15% of rein use. So sometimes, especially on the fast circles or whatever, you're busy going fast, 
you got a lot of speed going, you need control for the track, you know, um, and, and slowing them down and this kind of stuff. Uh, some, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of rain, you know, on them just to put a little more polish, especially when you're uh, showing, depending on what class it is, but when you're showing to judges, you know, but I like when I'm, when I'm riding these guys, I like it. I don't like to show anybody how I'm riding. I don't want to show the judges. I want the judges to think that this horse is, is like a, got automatic pilot or something like that, you know? It's just flying along on its own effortlessly. They're a pleasure. You always want horses to be shown. It's a pleasure to ride. There we go. I'm never in a hurry. I can always get back if I gotta get back on this horse. You know, later on in the same day for another 20 minute ride or something, because I don't ride them any more than 40. 40 minutes is my maximum. You know, if I got a horse that's a little nervous, after that 40 minutes ride, I'll spend 15, maybe 20 minutes. You know, just walking them around, making sure he's not doing anything, you're cooling down at the same time, but just riding around, making sure that everything's all okay, you know? So you, you take any kind of anxiety out of them. Now we're going to see if this guy here, because this will be the first time I've never done this with her, is I'm going to see if I can pick her up into a lope with that headset. Okay, good girl. Now, here we can just tweak her. I just got to guide her a little bit more. Now, you can see I'm still riding her one-handed. Now, I couldn't do this before. Five rides ago, forget it. There we go. Now, when she does that, I'll give her a pet. Now, I'm riding super light on her. You know, I'm like a fly. I try to be like a fly. So, reins are long enough that her head can float a little bit, you know. I'm not going to get in her way to let her find her balance. I don't want to make any adjustments there at this stage of the game. I just want her to be able to ride out nice and calm, same cadence. And just listen to me. I'm not going to do anything. Look at this, look at this. She's going to settle. She's really calm, super quiet interested in the, what we're doing and then when I check her I don't know it's I don't know maximum half a pound that will that I will use it's not very much I'll tell you that maybe if I was just to tug your shirt and just go like that that's all I'm doing when, when that bit hits her hits her mouth there This is nice, really nice. Okay, and I just, and there's a release on her. Good. Now I don't mind her head coming up. Walk on. I don't mind her head coming up like, walk. Her head coming up like that because at this stage of the game, um, especially when they're going through a downward transition, I don't want her collapsing on her front end and I don't want that extra weight there. I don't want the chance of her tripping up and. I don't want to have to pull up and yank on the reins, you know, which is the way you would say that. But I don't want to go down. It's a pit, walk on. That's a pitfall. So why go down, why go down the road of showing the horse pitfalls or putting your, jeopardizing your safety in a pitfall or with a pitfall? Good girl. So that worked out good on that side. Now the right side, we're going to find out. I just let her catch some air here. 
But that's the kind of thing you want. You just want to take your time, let it happen. Yes, there's a million things to fix, but whatever. I mean, you, we, we got many more rides, a lot of rides to go. So let's wait um, for things to happen, you know, and, and, uh, and, and we'll fix stuff, just fix it up as we go, okay? I don't need when the horses when horses get nervous. You'll see them, you know, um, putting a lot of manure out the backside, which a guy would just say they're just simply shitting a lot, and that's a lot from nerves. And they get really sweaty in the neck. She's damp. She's damp in the neck, just damp. The ears. She's she's um, she's. I would say more than damp. She's wet there, but she's thinking. You know, she's paying attention. Okay, so I'm just going to set her up a little bit of two hand to set her up and we're going to jog her first because I got to do the same again and we can jog, ask her to jog, jog, good. Am I in a hurry for that? No, absolutely not. I don't care if it's 50 steps before we jog. At this stage of the game, who cares? But that was acceptable. Okay, all right, so let's see if we can get a lope here and lope, lope, lope. Okay, now I got to steer her a little bit, so here I am two handed. I'm still one handed, but I'm just showing. And she's pushing a little bit on that shoulder, so I'm just going to more inside leg. But now we're not talking a lot of pressure here. For what it takes me to pull the rein out is what my leg pressure is, okay? There I got to use a little more leg. I didn't adjust the rein. But the trick is to set your hands and leave them there. What are we looking for again? Come on. What are we looking for is just the steadiness of the movement, the ease of go, calmness, no anxiety. Now I'm going to see if I can go one handed on her. And she's running what I would call a little bit flat. So I have to have a little more, a slightly, you know, half inch shorter rein. The neck rein, I got my hand over enough for the neck rein to be on there. I got support on my outside leg with that as well. So the outside leg, outside rein, inside leg, inside rain and the inside aids work to the outside inside to out and if she goes over the shoulder then I'm coming out to in so the bottom line is that you want equal balanced pressure between uh, your legs on a neutral ride now on a horse like this my pressure is changing quite a bit here because she wants to fall or drop to the inside because she lost her balance all right sometimes she loses her balance to the outside okay she doesn't have a lot of bend in her on this side so i'm just going to try and bring the side of her cheek in without her falling in, but you just got to do it a little bit. We're talking five, five, maybe 10 degrees of cheek. That would just, you know, not very much because that much pulls her balance 
to the inside, which then makes her go to the right. Okay. Um, but more importantly, is she will drop that right shoulder or drop the right rib cage. So I want her to get used to loping around quietly with that cheek. I need another one. I need a little more eye on the inside, okay? Which is kind of on this big circle is what you need also when you're spinning these horses. And even when you do a rollback, you don't want the horse overbent. They're, they have to learn to move through the body. I'm not saying when you're exercising them and warming them up that you can't bring their you know, uh, nose to your, to your knee or to your leg or whatever. I, I'm not saying that because that's a very good way of stretching them out. Now, is she ready? I, I can do that at the walk. Today, today for, this, for this video, I did not show you guys that. I'll leave something for the next time. And you might think this is, you know, watching this boring up here or you're bored watching this, but you can see how much, how much um, movement of loss of balance she has by where she has her neck or doesn't have her neck. But the trick is, like I keep going back to, you've got all day, you just take your time. Okay, so there she's high headed. Sometimes you got to bump on them a little bit to say, hey. Okay, we'll break her down, walk. Good, and give her a pet, good. Good. Now then, we can test some of the circle workout by doing some, doing some turnarounds. So we're going to see what she's like here in this turnaround. We're going to go to the left side now. Okay. I asked them to spin. Good girl. Come on. Good girl. Walk on. Walk. 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 Good. And here, all I'm doing is I'm lifting her, saying, hey, get your back up, stretch, stretch, stretch. But I need you to get your, your neck down as well. And here we're going to turn her again. Wait for her to go. Boop. Good girl. Every try is worth something. In other words, you got to reward them. If you got a horse that you know can really, really turn well and whatever's going on, then, you know, there might not be as much a reward there as you would like to, uh, to give them. But on a horse like this, I need everything to be nice and easy. She has to stay calm have good expression in her face, ears forward, like not laid back. And I mean, the ears can come back when she's listening to me, but I want her to feel like she's at home because I got to come back out here again with her, okay? All right, so we're going to go to the left again, ask her to walk forward. Good girl. Walk, 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 walk. Good girl. Now, I don't know if I can take her in one-handed. We can try. And spin. See if she comes off on that neck rein. Come on. Who? Good. Good girl. So my rein hand is up here, kind of pocket height. Uh, it's showing the, the, the... I don't want it all the way over here because I don't want to drag them through. Okay, there's nothing worse than dragging a horse through a maneuver. So there's two things with this. One is you set it and just hold it. You don't need a lot of um, 
you know, pressure there. If they're pushing on you, then they've got their weight too far forward. Uh, what she did, generally speaking, things were, uh, were somewhat uh, okay there, but it also, I, it's like a stop. If she does trip or fall, go down, I've got her right here and I can hold her up if I have to. So if there's a bit of a safety issue holding that, um, or putting that hand in position, I'm not really holding her. I do not want her to learn to lean on the bit, okay, because that's bad as well. Um, because they'll just learn to push on it and drop their weight forward. So uh, you, you have to do things in a way that, that help the animal uh, and also you, and take care of yourself at the same time, okay? All right, so I'll we'll ask her to round her back up again. There we go, good. And we'll try one handed to the right. See if she'll go to the right now. Maybe she won't. Maybe she's going to... So I'm going to help her a little bit here. Spin. Good girl. Come on. Come on. Who? Good girl. Good girl. So same deal there. Very good for where she's at, okay? And ideally, what I would like when I back up is I would like that head. There we go. Good girl. Now, before her head was way up here, she couldn't back up at all, just really to speak of. Good girl, come on, back up. Back up. Back. Good. Good. She wants to put the head down. Um, her, her issue is, is that she needs more strength in the, in the back. She needs longer muscles or longer muscles with more strength so she can be really rounded and really get those hips coming under her, get the hocks under her when she goes back. Okay, so she's working on it. She's way better before her head was high, hollow backed in order to go backwards. Okay, it was kind of, kind of crazy. Okay. So I'm going to quit here now. So I hope you guys really enjoyed all this. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like it and, and even ring the bell if possible. Okie dokie. We'll see you till next time. Thank you.